dear students a warm welcome to vtu e shikshana program so in this video we are going to see about module 3 of the subject artificial neural network the module 3 topics covers a statistical learning theory support vector machines and radial basis function networks let us see about the topic syllabus in detail in this module 3 of artificial neural network the module is going to be a statistical learning theory which is going to have a syllabus of learning from examples the statistical learning theory we are going to read the learnings from the examples the statistical learning theory support vector machines the support vector machine applications to image classifications radial basis functions networks regularization theorem a generalized radial basic basis function networks and learnings in radial basis network functions and its applications to face recognition so this is the topic we are going to cover in the module 3 of artificial neural network let me have an learning objective this module is going to provide the knowledge on generalization and function approximation and various architectures of building an artificial neural network this is our learning objective from this module 3 of artificial neural network let me see an introduction of a statistical learning theory what is a statistical learning theory it is a framework for a machine learning a drawing from the field of a statistics and functional analysis the statistical learning theory which deals with the problems of finding a predictive function based on the data what actually the goal of a learning in is prediction a goal of learning is nothing but a yeah, prediction the learning which is going to fall into many categories including supervisory control unsupervised learning semi supervised learning transfer learning online learning and reinforcement learning these are the learning which is going to fall into the subject so the actual goal of learning is nothing but a prediction which falls on a different categories as like what i mentioned as of now so from the perspective of statistical uh, learning theory the supervised learning is a best understood in supervised learning an algorithm is given samples that are labeled in some useful ways for example the uh, sample might be a description of apples and the labels could uh, could be uh, whether or not the apples are edibles so the supervisory uh, supervised learning involves learning from a training set of data every point in this training is an input output pair so as already we are aware about that the supervised learning which involves a set of training data as if the point is maybe an input output pair the training is going to be always in the out input output pair where the input maps to an output so the learning problem consists of inferring the function that maps between the input and the output in a predictive fashion okay so such that the learned function can be used to predict output from the future from the future input such a way only we are going to do that one so the algorithm takes this previously labeled samples and use them to induce a yeah, classifier so this classifier is a functions that assigns the labels 
to samples including the samples that have never been previously seen by the algorithm. That is the actual thing which is going to be present over there. That is why we are going to take it is a supervised learning. Move on to the next one, a goal of supervised learning algorithm. What actually the goal is going to be given for the supervised, uh, supervised learning system? So, the goal of this supervised learning algorithm is to optimize some measures of performance. It has to optimize the performance, the measure of the performance, such as minimizing the number of mistakes made on a new sample. So, as like that, we are going to take the particular thing. So, example I have given over there, a machine learning and its statistics, a machine learning and its statistics. A machine learning may be a network or graphs. Statistics may be taken as a model. And if you are going to consider as a weights, it is nothing but a parameter. Learning is set into a fitting. And generalization, this is nothing but test set performance. It is going to make the performance to be get set over there. So, supervised learning, it is a regression or a classification learning, regression or classification learning and unsupervised learning which is nothing but density estimation or clustering. This is going to be the actual goal of the supervised learning. Let me see about in detail what actually a machine learning is. A machine learning is an algorithm as already we people are aware about it. Okay, a Machine learning is nothing but an algorithm. <coughs> that can learn from data without uh, rely, relying on the rules based programming. That is the most important thing we have to. It is nothing but a learning algorithm which learns from the data without rely, relying on the rule based programming. That is the most important thing. So, it does not belonging or does not depend on the rule based programming. So, and machine learning is also called as a subfield of computer science and artificial intelligence. It is a subfield of computer science and artificial intelligence. So, that which deals the data, which deals with building systems, which deals with the building systems that can learn from the data instead of explicitly programmed instructions. So, that it does not need any explicit programmed instruction. So, it can learn from the data. It can learn from the data and it is going to build the system. Such a way it is going to do that one. That is going to be called as a machine learning. So, in general if you are going to see about that, I am going to give a training examples and sample space is going to be provided for that. From that, it is going to take the training examples and it is going to incorporate into the machine learning, into the algorithm, it is going to incorporate that one. From that, it is going to predict the rule, it is going to predict the rule, what kind of thing has to be happen in the future. So, based on the new examples and it is going to label the new example from the prediction. This is the process, actual process of machine learning. So, that we are going to consider this machine learning in our module 3 to make the appropriate understanding of us. So, we are going to take the second one is going to be called as statistical modeling. Statistical modeling. What is statistical modeling? A statistical modeling is a formalization of relationships between the variable in the form of mathematical equations. So, it is going to have the formalization of relationships between the variables that too in the form of mathematical equations. Okay, now. So, statistical modeling is a subfield of mathematics. It is going to be a subfield of mathematics as how we have come across with the machine learning is a subfield of computer science and artificial intelligence. This statistical modeling is going to be a subfield of mathematics and which deals with finding the relationships between the variables to predict an outcome, to predict an outcome. So, which deals finding relationships 
between variables to predict the outcome that is the most important thing to analyze about to understand about the statistical modeling shall we discuss about some instance which is going to be related with the statistical modeling so statistical modeling usually works with number of assumptions more number of assumptions okay it's have uh, multiple uh, assumptions are going to be incorporated to make this modeling over there for instance a linear regression is going to be get assumed a linear regression is going to be get assumed so that what is going to do that a linear relationship between independent and dependent variables are going to be get considered and it's going to have a homoceptic city and mean of error at zero for every dependent value and independence of observations and error should be normally distributed for each values of the dependent variables always the errors are going to be get distributed depends upon the variables each value of its variable okay now so here we are going to see about that all random variables in the sequence or vectors have the same finite variance so this is also known as homogeneity of variance okay so we are going to see about that the homogeneity is going to be dealt like this all random variables in the sequence of or a vector has the same finite variance so similarly logistic regression comes with its own set of assumptions so even a non linear model have to compile to a continuous segregation boundary okay so that the machine learning algorithm do assumes a few of things uh, few of these things uh, but in general are spared for most of this assumptions so the biggest advantage of using this machine learning algorithm is that there might not be any continuity or boundary also we not, we need not specify uh, the distribution of dependent or independent variables in a machine learning algorithm as if you are going to see about that statistical modeling error should be normally distributed it should be distributed for each value of the dependent variable whereas in the machine learning we need not to specify the distribution of dependent or independent variables so that it can do its operation okay so that is the biggest advantage of using the machine learning algorithm okay so there might not be any continuity of boundaries whereas this statistical modeling which is going to have a continuous segregation boundary okay so in addition to perform the bounds a computational learning theory uh, which studies the time complexity and feasibility of learning in generally in computational learning theory a computation is considered a feasible uh, if it can done only in the polynomial time that is going to be a major concern so classification problems are those for which the output will be an element for an discrete set of labels so classification is very common for machine learning applications the input would be represented by a large multi dimensional vector those uh, whose elements represented a pixels in the picture say a cv applications okay it's an example for this one a cv application so after learning a function which is going to be get based on the training set data the function is going to be validated on a test uh, set of data uh, this data that did not appear in the training set at all that is the ma uh, major uh, thing which we have consider over there so that so a, a classification is going to be very common for this machine learning application hence what happened after learning a function based on the training set data that function is going to be validated on the test set of data so that data that did not appear in the training set with the help of this introduction we are going to move on to our syllabus learning from examples and generalization learning from examples and generalization so the issue of learning is central 
the issue of learning is going to be a central. Uh, the issue of learning uh, uh, which makes central to the study and design of artificial neural network. In human, learning from examples and experience is both natural and effortless as already we people are going to be available are aware about that one okay by seeing an object we can come to know about that what the object is going to be and we can relate that one with the particular associations so as we people are going to be as a human being we can learn majority of the things by from the examples which we have been come across over there by our own experience which we are going to be uh, undergone so the both natural and effortless things are going to be get happen for us if we can understand that the mechanism that underlie such natural learning process then one can develop a software and a hardware to be embedded into a artificial system as we can we can do that one so once we are going to embed into an artificial system which will enable them to learn from examples and thus exploit the informations in a real world data that is that that such a kind of system is going to be called as artificial intelligent system isn't it so today we are overwhelmed by this sheer value of this data that we need to track be it in with the bit stream that is going to be from a radio telescope around the globe and we are going to have that informations so the telescope around the globe are the petabytes of informations that exist on the internet the system must be designed to manage such a large uh, uh, the large data available in the way the useful information can be efficiently extracted. So to do this efficient extraction, we are going to supervised learning system that can play a key role over here. So they learn from examples, the supervised learning system which learn from examples. As we saw a number of applications of supervised learning the problem of learning from examples essentially involves approximating a function or classifying a data set from sparse and noisy data. Shall we see about the key features of supervised learning? So in generalization, the key features of the supervised learning system is that they are trained on a data set of the forms T, the data set of the forms D where we are going to take D is equal to a set of X of K and D K which is going to be representing in its value okay now so here R it's going to be for one dimensional output here the training involves searching the relationship that underlies so we are going to make this relationship with N data and here we're going to make it with are the relationships okay now so that that involves the relationship the training which involves searching the relationships that underlies the data in such a way that the machine can be used in predictive mode to generate outputs based on unseen inputs so we can make that it's going to be y predicted is equal to function of x unseen data y predicted y is equal to f of x f of x y predicted value is equal to function of unseen data this is a, another way of stating that we require that the machine to be able to successfully generalize successfully generalize that's why we're going to say that one this is going to be a generalization here we are going to have the regression y predicted is a real random variable y predicted is going to be a real random variable this is nothing but regression and y predictor is either a plus value or a minus value it may be a positive or a negative value when it can be false on a positive 
plus 1 will be mentioned over there. When it is going to be false and negative, it may be minus 1 value. That condition is going to be called as a classification. That is going to be called as a classification. Okay. So, this is a generalization of a yeah, supervised learning system. Moving to the next topic, approximation. What is approximation? The approximation results gives us a guarantee. It is going to give us a guarantee that with a sufficient number of hidden neurons, with a sufficient number of hidden neurons. So, it is possible to approximate a given function as described by the input output training pass to any arbitrary level of accuracy, to any arbitrary level of accuracy. Okay. So, having learned a set of Q training patterns, the usefulness of this network depends primarily on the accuracy of its predictions of the output for an untest patterns, unseen test patterns. That is going to be the important parameter we have to analyze over there. The useful of this network depends primarily on the accuracy of its prediction of the output for unseen test parameters. Okay, So, the test patterns have not been seen by the system. That is going to be predicting the things which is going to be present over here. And some important note we have to understand before entering into the other topic. So, this is so because when the network has to operate in the real world, real time world, it is reasonable to expect that most of the data, most of the input data it receives would never have been seen by the network before in its limited set of given training patterns, given training patterns. So, that reduction of the mean squared error of this triggering or, or for the training set to a low level does not guarantee a good generalization. So, a neural network might be predict the value based on unseen inputs rather inaccurately. Even when the network has been trained to considerably low error tolerances so that a generalization should be measured using the test patterns similar to that of the training patterns. Okay? So, a generalization should be measured using a test pattern similar to that of the training patterns. Okay? So, which the patterns are going to be drawn from the same probability distribution as the training set which is going to be get succeeded by this particular generalization process. So, this is the most important note what we have to observe. Okay? So, that we will continue with the next one. Let me see about a broad objective of this particular topic. The broad objective of this exercise is not to fit the model to the training data. So, accurately that it falls to the generalize on unseen data. That is the most important thing we have to analyze over here. Okay. So, uh, rather that what we wish is to model the generator function as closely as possible so that the network becomes capable of good generalization. This is going to be get good generalization. When training reduces the mean squared error over the training set of uh, set to a sufficiently low levels and the network can predict the output from unseen inputs which can be fails to generate on the unseen data. Okay. So, unseen data inputs with this considerable accuracy we say that the network provides valid generalization to unseen patterns. Note that the reduction of the mean squared error on the training set to a uh, very low level does not necessarily guarantee a good generalization. So, a quick example classifies this counter intuition notion, notation. So, the problem of approximation a function involves fitting the set of weights of the neural networks of the given training data. 
so that we are going to enter into an example of overfitting. So a network with too many weights which can be called as a free parameters which can call as a free parameters will fit the training data very accurately and will generalize poorly to unseen data. So this diagram we can see about this diagram which is going to be shown over here with a 7 hidden node feed forward neural network with 15 noisy patterns that describes the deterministic unvariant functions which is going to be shown in the dashed lines which is going to be shown in the dashed lines so that the error tolerance 0 0.0001 can be get observed over there and the network learns each data point extremely accurate so that the network function which develops a high curvature and fails to generalize and fails to generalize okay so as we have come across over there that the figure is going to be response for an seven hidden node feed forward neural network trained to learn the 15 noisy patterns 15 noisy patterns 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 points, 15 noisy patterns that describes the deterministic unvariant function which have been shown in the dotted line, which have been shown in the dotted line. Okay, so the error tolerance was 0 0.0001. That is the error tolerance which have been fitted over there in this particular diagram. So the network learns each data point very accurately but its function develops high curvature high curvature we are going to see about that it's going to provide a high curvature over there correct or not so this high curvature that makes it look very different from the true function the true function is going to be shown in a dotted line it's somewhat a bit of a curvature whereas the actual data which have been normalized over there is going to be showing a very high curvature the function which develops a high curvature correct or not on the other hand a network with too few weights will also give poor generalization at as it will be unable to approximate even the training data so the, the generalization should be measured using the test pattern similar to that of the training data patterns which have been given over there Sometimes it is incorrect to evaluate the generalization ability using this patterns that might represent a variations not reflected in the training set. So the test pattern must be selected from the same probability distribution as that of the training set. Henceforth, we assume that indeed this is in this case with the assumption in place a good generalization that means that the network performance observed during the training will persist with a high probability of patterns not used in the training that has to be observed over here and it's very important to strike a balance between the number of training samples used to train the model and the inherent complexity of the model as measured by a number of free parameters in the network. As we remind now, we have to recall that Ossum's razor principle, this Ossum's razor principle as we will see, we, will, we have seen that the generalization ability of a mission is closely related to the capacity of the mission in term of the family of functions it can represent as well as to the data set that is going to be used for the training. So as we are aware about that the capacity of the mission which is going to be get mentioned as functions it can represent and the data set that is going to be used for the training. So no more things should be pre-assumed to exist than 
the absolute necessary that is going to be dealt with William awesome. Let me see about the statistical learning theory in detail. So to, to, towards understanding this complex web of relationships, our starting point will be a review of statistical learning theory proposed by Vapnik, okay, Professor Vapnik. So Vapnik's essential idea is one of the regularization which says that when uh, when we given a finite, a finite set of uh, training examples, the search for the best approximating function must be restricted to a small space of possible architectures. When the space of representative functions and their capacity is large and the data set is small, the model tend to overfit and generalizely poor. This is going to be the main thing. So, Given a finite set of training examples, the search for the best approximation function must be restricted to a small space of possible architecture. Possible architecture. Understand? In other words, we can give that a given finite data set, one has to achieve the correct balance between the accuracy achieved during the training on that data, on that data set and the capability of this machine to learn a data set without error. So, this briefly explains about the importance notation of generalization and reviews the bias variance dilemma in the context of neural network. Subsequently, the statistical learning theory leads to the design of construction of support vector machines. So, when the space of a representative functions and their capacity is going to be larger and the data set small, so the model tends to overfit and generalize very poorly. So, that a given finite training data set will achieve the correct balance between accuracy in training on that data set, on that data set and the capacity of the machine which is going to learn any data set without any error. That is the important thing. Coming to optimal neural network, the optimal neural network as emphasized earlier the proper approach to achieve good generalization is to trade off between achieving a good fit to the training data while maintaining the fitted off between achieving a good fit to the training data while maintaining the fitted function to be smooth enough by limiting the complexity of this model. So, the key to good generalization lies in an understanding of the bias variance dilemma. For simplicity of this exposition, consider a neural network with a single linear output neuron so that we can recall from the sum of squares error function, we can take the data as epsilon is equal to 1 over 2 integral of a function f of x comma w which is going to be subtracted by from the energy which is going to be present over there and which is going to be lead to a, another integral form of half of integral of this value. Here if you are going to see about that, this value which is going to be an optimal network function where the search of mechanism which is going to be minimizes the error by trying to make the first integral to be 0. And coming to the second half of the part, which is going to be a residual error, always it is going to average the training data variance based on the conditions on the input which have been given to that. So that where all the quantities which is going to retain their earlier connotations also recall that the second term is going to be independent of the network function and thus 
the weights are going to be get averaged over here. And this contributes to a residual error that is going to be determined by the intrinsic property of the training data. Specifically, the second term represents the second term represents the average training data variance conditioned on the input. So during training, we therefore attempt to minimize the first term over which we have control. So the optimal network function, we are in a search of minimizing the error epsilon by trying to make the first integral to be 0. So we know that the optimal function, the optimal function is therefore none another, none other than this term. So the optimal neural network satisfies the data function of x comma w is equal to energy of this particular parameter. So this value becomes 0 over there so that this is going to be the finally we are going to get the optimal function for this particular value. Let me come across with the training dependencies on the data. What are the training dependency for this data? The closeness of a network function to a optimal is given by the term under this integral, under this integral. So under the integral function of function of x comma w minus energy of this particular value, which measures how the network deviates from the desired average. Notice that the deviation depends on a particular instance of a training data set. So this dependency can be easily eliminated by averaging this term over the n assemble of possible data sets of the size q, the possible data size of the data q. So this is going to be derived the expression energy expression is going to be made like this. Okay. So from this we are going to study about the causes of errors. What is the causes of error? There are two possible reasons for a network deviation from the average energy which are enumerated as one BIOS and second variance. What is BIOS? The network function itself differs from the regression function of this particular energy so that we call this as BIOS. The network function itself differs from the regression function of this energy which is going to be called as BIOS. And the same network function generates large error on some data set and small error on others. In other words, we can say that uh, the network function is sensitive to the selection of data set that is going to be called as variance. The network function is sensitive to the selection of the data set that is going to be called as a variance. Okay. So these are the two causes of errors, bias and variance. So these are the possible reasons for the network deviation from the average energy. So let me quantify this bias and variance. Quantification of bias and variance. We now qualify the BIOS and variance. We have to quantify the BIOS and variance. Notice that the equation which have been expanded as follows from the previous example, from the previous expression which have been taken over there, this expression is going to be get expanded as like this. So from this we are going to make the expansion of this data function with the energy which is going to be expanded like this. Consequently we are going to do this second one E of Q energy of Q is going to be expanded like this. So here what happens this value which is going to provide a bias variance dilemma where the last term in this above equation which is we have been come across over there, which is going to vanish on taking the 
an ensemble average. Therefore, we are going to get the value which consisting of a bias and the variance. These two are going to be get present over here. Such a way we are going to make that one. Where the dependencies of this function has been made explicit. So, notice that the separation of this ensemble average into the bias and variance terms. As mentioned, the bias measures the extent of which a network function which is going to be deviates from the regression function of this energy. So, averaged overall possible data sets. As like that, the variance measures the sensitivity of the network function to the choice of the data set. It spends a few uh, moments of the above equation. So, we will spend a yeah, few moments of this above equation. We will come to know about this particular thing. So, which reflects on what it describes over there. So, from this discussion, we can observe that one need to strike a balance between the ratio of training set size to network complexity such that both bias and variance are minimized. Only then we can expect the model to be get generalized well. Okay. So, as we are going to take that striking a balanced between the ratio of the training set size to the network complexity such that the both bias and variance are to be get minimized. From this, we could we, we have to understand about that the two important factors that dictates a valid generalization from the network that has learnt a training pattern set, which are the number of training patterns used in learning, the number of training patterns used in learning, and second, the number of weights in the network, the number of weights in the network. Okay. So, intuitively it is clear that there should be a sufficient number of approximately distributed training parameters patterns that are sampled into the training set in order to describe the function. Without this, it is very difficult to expect that the network to learn undulations in the functions that are not described by the training patterns. In addition, in relation to the number of free parameters of the network, uh, which is simply the number of adju adjustable weights. So, the number of training patterns should be a large enough to effectively train all the weights. So, to, uh, to too many weights and too few patterns would lead a situation where the network might learn uh, might uh, learn the weight value without a sufficient constraints. So, then it fails. It fails, it fails to capture the underlying trend of the function. So, it is the such situation that the network gets overtrained and fails to generalize. Okay. Please be remember that during the constraint without sufficient constraints what happen? This system is going to be failed to capture the underlying trend of the functions. So, that in such situations, the network gets overtrained and fails to generalize. Okay. Let me move on to the next topic, statistical learning theory, brief of stochastic nature of time. This is going to be called a stochastic nature of time. With the generalized problem in the perspective, we will review some of the milestones of Wapnick statistical learning theory. So, which is based on learning from the examples. Only we have to learn from the examples. As we are aware about that the supervisor control is going to be good learning from the examples. So, as in this case what happens? The learning is a stochastic process with the training data being drawn from two set of variables where an input vector and the response or an output value. Such a way it is going to be get present over there. So, the important point to be note that the relationship between the value x and d 
is probabilistic. An element from X does not map uniquely to any element of D. Rather, it depends or it defines the probability distribution of D. Alternatively, the X drawn from the, or X of I drawn from the probability of X P of K which is going to be called as marginal probability, then the response which is going to be observed from the conditional probability so that we can say that an unknown probability distribution P of X comma D which is going to be defined on X cross D determines the probabilistic of observing a training data points. So, therefore, the training data set which is going to be actually guaranteed by sampling the space of x into d. So, here we are going to assume q times in accordance with the distribution of p of x comma d which will formalize the learning problem and boils down to search for the appropriate estimator function. So, that the estimator function can be tends x tends to d which can be then used in the predictive mode to generate a value or value of d in a response to an unseen input of x. Let me see about the stochastic nature of t. We say that an unknown because the source of randomness can be more than 1 and the randomness can be difficult if not impossible to characterize. There are b or there may be a noise in measure uh, in the measurement or noise in the inputs or the governing uh, process might itself be stochastic. So, we will have a stochastic nature of t which is going to be get processed in this particular diagram. In order to successfully solve a regression or classification task, a learning mechanism or a learning machine learns an approximating function x comma w which may be also referred as an uh, hypothesis which is a function of both we can say input of x and the parameters of w weights as the notation emphasize which is going to take in function of x and function of w which is going to be taken over here. Okay, such a way it is going to be dead deal over here. Note that the present discussion in this general item, the general terms, the approximating the function f being referred to many to be realized by a neural network, a physiologic, uh, physiologic system or a support vector mission. Okay. So, let me continue the topic in the next video. So, we will go through the stochastic nature of t in detail in the forthcoming video. Thank you.